Hello and very welcome back. And uh, you can see now we are continuing our discussion with the FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array. That's what it stands for. And in our previous module, very introductory module on FPGA, we saw various types of FPGA, what FPGA is. And uh, we understood about the different manufacturer and providers of the FPGA's boards. And now, today, in this module, let us focus on the internal architecture of the FPGA. So we will see the internal structure, what's inside the FPGA, and we'll try to understand in terms of a block diagram. So right now, you can see here is an FPGA board uh, by some uh, manufacturer, and here is the FPGA chip. So that is an IC. It's basically a programmable IC as we have understood and we can program any logic function into it and uh, so most of the FPGAs they contain CLBs that stands for uh, CLB that is your logic blocks uh, or it is also called as LABs that is logic array blocks. So what exactly is inside the CLB? So one CLB looks like this in this uh, as shown in this block diagram so this is also called as a logic cell so there are thousands of such logic cells inside this ic inside this ic okay and inside one particular logic cell we see there is a block called as lut that stands for lookup table lookup table is a kind of uh, table or you can say the truth table, which is able to store the logic function in the form of truth table. Okay, uh, so it has got some input. So this is like three LUTs. There are two of these and you can have A, B, C, D as the inputs to these uh, lookup table. Then the logic cell also contains full adder. So you have a carry in and a carry out signal and you also have one bit memory in the logic cell that is a D flip flop. So you got the input of the, to the flip flop, you got the output to the flip flop and occasionally you also have the multiplexer. The role of the multiplexer is to route the channels and the data throughout the logic cells okay for the interconnections and the most important is you have the clock uh, for each logic cell so you have thousands of such clbs or logic arrays uh, inside the fpga so here you can also understand this by means of this schematic representation. So the orange one, they are called as uh, CLBs, that is the logic blocks. And the uh, you can see this, the vertical lines and the horizontal lines, they are called as horizontal routing channels and the vertical routing channels respectively. And this is the, the the blue one uh, the, or the violet color one, they are called as input output block. So basically the role of input output blocks or the IO pads is to ex, uh, interface the FPGA, internals of the FPGA, interface it with the external world. So you basically, uh, in this IC, you will see that at the four sides of these uh, inside IC, you will have such IO blocks. Inside these IC, you have these orange blocks, that is the thousands of that CLBs, and you have these vertical lines and the horizontal lines, they are called as routing channels. So basically, when you program any particular function into a CLB, not only in single CLB, depending on how the big or small your logic function is to be programmed, you use multiple of CLBs and the routing channels are there to connect and route the data from one CLB to another and accordingly the full function can be implemented. IO blocks is as I said is to interface the external world to the FPGA. Okay so now uh, as we see that this is a simplified example illustration of one logic unit or uh, which consists of LUT, full adder and the D-type flip-flop. 
So moving forward, you actually can see that this is another board of FPGA. This is another board of FPGA. There, there is a manufacturer or provider of the FPGA is mentioned, and this is a FPGA chip. So that's an IC. And inside it, we just saw in our previous slide what is going to be the structure. So what kind of logic function you want to implement inside this IC? And therefore, this IC has been placed on this board and this is a complete board. This IC is placed on this board and this is a complete board. So what can you implement? You can implement a simple function as simple as synchronous counter, which is like multiple of flip-flops and the clock and it will count the numbers. You can implement memory controllers in case of uh, memory design. You can implement the whole microprocessor function inside the FPGA or you can implement a complete system on chip SOC that contains the processor, memory, controllers, uh, uh, logic functions such as uh, DSP, digital signal processing, Ethernet and so many other blocks and that makes up SOC. Okay, so the advantage of your FPGA is you have a lot of flexibility and reconfigurability. You can implement one function, clear it. You can implement another function. You can implement any kind of functions you want. So this is an architecture. Again, we are going to dive deeper into it. So you can see that this is a logic block of an FPGA with four input LUT and you can have a flip-flop and optional. So you, this is a multiplexer just to route the uh, data. So LUTs and one bit flip-flop is your logic block. And LUT can be able to perform n bit of binary functions. So in the previous slide, we got the fixed number of inputs right here, A, B, C, D. But in FPGA, modern FPGA, you have n number of inputs. So it means you can implement n bit binary function. For example, I want to implement a BCD to uh, a BCD to gray code converter. That's a circuit. That's a logic function I want to implement. And how many bits? N bit or let's say 10 bit. So I can use this one. So this is like uh, inputs. There are four inputs here. So you will have one, two, three, four. But if you have 10 input lookup table, then you n equal to 10. Okay, now, now this desired function that you want to implement is programmed by storing a truth table of that function into the SRAM cell of the LUT. So you have got the, together, they are acting as a SRAM cell and uh, the function then is calculated by reading the memory address of uh, determined by the inputs how many inputs you have and accordingly the memory address is surrounded. Now, look at this. These are the vertical lines and these are the horizontal lines. As we have said, they are our routing channels and at the interjunction, intersection of each routing channels, you have got one red circle dot. If you expand this that, you inside, you see that these are the wire segments. These are the wires in the black, but inside it, you, this is basically a programmable switch. So you can switch between any wire, between any routing channel, depending on your functionality you want to implement. Finally, you have a multiplexer right over here. So you also see that you have four inputs, A, B, C, D. This is your lookup table. You got the flip-flop. Flip-flop is having a clock and flip-flop is having the reset input. Then the output of the LED is going to marks output of the flop is going to the marks and the role of the multiplexer is to enable uh, it manages the flow of data and the signal within the device and your LUT or logic cell has only one single output okay so uh, there are additional components in the FPGAs also like we have also seen the IO blocks for the external world connection you can have inside the FPGA chip clock generators. So there is these functions. So that is providing the internal clock as shown here, you have got internal clock going to the flip-flop. Uh, so modern FPGAs, uh, they have several uh, PLL blocks, the phase lock loop, which are used to provide the clock to the FPGA. 
uh, functionality okay so you have this uh, fractional clock frequency of the pll uh, you have divisions and multiplication uh, can be generated and the mini fpgas they also contain additional hardware function it means they are fixed functions such as memory blocks so you fpga you can have inbuilt memory already so you can use it when you are going to implement let's say a microprocessor or you are going to implement uh, let's say the complete soc so you can use the inbuilt uh, memory for example block ram for your soc design in the fpga finally uh, there are uh, fpgas which are equipped with the uh, DSP, digital signal processing block. So let's say you have to perform some digital uh, signal, uh, you have to perform some processing on the digital signal. So you can have inbuilt DSP blocks inside the FPGA and uh, FPGAs can have microcontrollers as well. So you see that this is an FPGA board and inside uh, on this FPGA board, you basically can have the microcontrollers as well. Okay, so you can have the interface between the microcontroller and the FPGA. And this is a standalone microprocessor board actually. Okay, you can have the interface of this one board with the FPGA board if the FPGA board doesn't have a microcontroller but you can also have you can ignore this and you can have a one fpga board in such a way that your fpga is there and you have also the dsp chip you have a microcontroller chip you have some other chips for example ethernet interface usb controllers and ddr controllers so basically using all these blocks you can create a system on chips on a by a single fpga board Okay, now what is the prime difference between an FPGA and an IC? So integrated circuit IC, for example, the microcontrollers, microprocessors and the ASIC. We have seen application specific ICs and there are FPGA ICs also. So the difference is you are ICs such as microcontroller, microprocessor or ASIC, they are application specific. We have already decided what is this IC. If it is a microcontroller, it is a microcontroller IC. If it is a processor, it is a processor IC. And uh, if it is application specific IC, such as a memory or a USB or Ethernet or DSP, so then it is a, that specific IC. You cannot, once it is manufactured, you cannot actually uh, change the functionality of, of this IC. And then accordingly, you have the board and some external interfaces. However, FPGAs are program can be reconfigured again and again. So whole IC functionality, whether it is processor, microcontroller or ASIC can be programmed in this IC. Okay, so that's a flexibility advantage you have. Also, uh, FPGAs can process data in parallel. It means it's not a sequential unlike the ICs here. You can have a data processing in parallel. It means your operations can be performed at the same time, not the sequentially. Then FPGAs are better suited for high performance computing application, therefore, such as artificial intelligence. However, on the ICs, they have a fixed function upon deployment and operate sequentially. That is one after another. For example, you have microcontroller and microprocessor. You have the instructions to be executed and they execute those instructions one after the another. That is sequential, not in parallel. So FPGA has advantage of high performance parallel computing. FPGA also this uh, once uh, you say that your FPGA can have the capability to process data in parallel, parallel computing that allows the FPGA to deliver significantly higher performance using lower clock speed and lower clock speeds means lower power. You can have that advantage with FPGA. However, sequential uh, processing of the data within the microcontroller, microprocessor or ASIC can lead to higher power consumption because the ICs have to use the higher speed clocks 
okay to keep the pace with the processing workload so sometimes your computer you can see that uh, your processor in the laptop or computer they have to work uh, they have to use the high clock speeds to process the data uh, sequentially and that leads to usually higher power consumption and that's why sometimes you feel your laptop is getting warmer or hotter or computer is getting warmer or hotter okay so hope you found this uh, module quite useful this is our second module on the fpga we gave useful information about the fpga we explained you the internal architecture of the fpga if you found this model useful share it with others for a wider range and till then wish you happy learning stay tuned for more engaging content like this See you very soon.